Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. Man, I can't live this lie no more. Say I was living the lie Woke up and put a mask on my face Cause I was scared to be myself in this place I was living the lie Doing what I could to fit in Just to prove that I was cool to all my friends See, I was living the lie Make songs about guns and selling drugs Foolish of me to think that I was a thug I was living the lie Coming up in my younger days, all about me. Never focus on God's grace. I do like a superstar. I'm straight up to the spotlight. All about an image, girl, for pretending to every club night. Getting to the money, trying to stack up your ends. By telling lies to my friends, I'm just trying to fit in. And they said, we born to die, but through Christ, I'm bred to win. But every day I had to pretend, caught up in the world of sin. I'm lost, I'm lost in the game, in the game, I couldn't keep my head up. For the cost, for the cost that Jesus paid, now it's time for me to mend up. So I hold up, stand up, and show my peers just what it is. It's more than life than having to settle, I'm living it all in fear. When I gave that all the grace, then everything would be so clear. I gotta tell the truth, the lies don't stop. I was right here alive. Woke up and put a mask on my face, cause I was scared to be myself in this place. I was living the lie, doing what I could to fit in, just to prove that. I was cool to all my friends See, I was living the lie Make songs about guns and selling drugs Foolish of me to think that I was a thug I was living the lie What it do, what it do, man. Y'all live with them royalty boys, man. Another Monday night, another awesome Monday night, man. Got the homie Jai Dowdy in the building with us. Yeah. And y'all know it's going to be a good one, man. This man right here ain't going to hold back, man. That's what I like him. <laughs> but, hey, with no further ado, man, you got your boy Mark Lemon in the building, man. Yes, sir. You got your boy Stony Hill. Hey, and your boy Kai 9 man. To make this thing, them royalty boys on the Aspiring Artist Show. What's going on, fellas? What's happening? What's hey, up, another day, man. Jot Dowdy in the building. Hey, I'm here. Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, man, I'm having a good time, man. I'm excited. So. Okay, hey, we're going to jump right into it then, hey, man. Hey, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's but, do yo, it. man, my homie Jot Dowdy, man, you know we've been knowing you for a good little minute. Every time we meet you, man, you got a good, upbeat spirit, man. Y'all about the kingdom, man. Mm -hmm. You never changed since we known you, bro. Yes, sir. So you know we be watching. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? So we be watching, man. We be looking, man. You, you know, you yeah, you stay kingdom. From the beginning, even you yeah. represent with your shirt, man. I'm not yeah. religious. Yeah, I'm not religious. I'm kingdom. Okay, it's a difference. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, man, let's get straight into this thing, man. Uh, you just shot a video this weekend, didn't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. I shot a video for my new single, Ride This Clean. Yeah, yeah. it's going. So let's talk about that concept, man. And uh, how did the video shoot go? Oh man, video shoot went well, man. My little brother J Will Visuals, he came through and he shot it, and um, it's just basically just me saying that uh. Even though I got nice things, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It don't mean I'm not saved. Okay. You know, because when I got saved, I thought that you're supposed to give everything you got away. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, but then, as I matured in Christ, I learned that uh, he created this earth for us and our enjoyment. Absolutely. So it's okay to have good things. Absolutely. It's just we don't covet other things or make them higher than him. Mm -hmm. Right. It's okay to enjoy them. Absolutely. So this clean. Man, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, right? Say it again. So it seemed like you're getting into fullness. Oh, yeah. You're getting into the fullness. All right, man. So you know, man, uh, a little behind the scene information, man. I hit you up, man. Ask you, man. All right, man. You want to be labeled as a Christian artist <laughs> or not? Because you know, nowadays, we got to come out and ask somebody, man. You might offend somebody. Somebody might feel some kind of way. You might get their little feathers ruffled. Like, look here, man. Don't put that on my fly. All right. <laughs> now. With no further ado, man, how do you feel about that, man? As far as like putting out your faith, I how important is it to put your faith out there, man? A Christian rapper, gospel rapper, holy roller, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that's me. Wrap it up. Put me in the box. I okay. don't care because everything I do is to represent Jesus Christ. Okay. So I want to be associated with him, with my name, with the ministry I do, okay. whatever. So when you see me, I want you to see him. Okay. So put okay. the name on me. I want it. 
It's a blessing. Yeah. Hey, man, let's get it right. Yeah. Why are we gonna shun it though? Let's talk about it. Why are we shutting the name? Hey, that's a good question. I don't know. Why are we trying to be separate shun. ourselves from the name of Jesus if we are sharing the gospel? Because I need more people. I don't wanna eliminate the people that are not uh uh Christians. So I, I'm a bad person to do this, so uh, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, you know, like, if I give my CD to someone out in the streets, they might shun me. Yeah, they're going to shun you anyway, though, because of the content. Right. So either they're going to listen and feel convicted from it and come to you and be like, yo, I needed that. That helped change my life. Mm-hmm. Or they're going to roll the window down and throw it out. But watch this. <laughs> Watch this though. They gonna do that to a secular rapper too. Come which on. is true. Speak on it, man. If which they like true. it, they're gonna rock with it. They're gonna come and tell you, yo, that's riding. I like that. Keep mm-hmm. doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If it's trash, they're gonna throw it out the window. So what I'm or they're gonna about, break man. down the blood on your CD. Let's just be real. They, they keep it real. I'm just saying. So it that's doesn't matter who honest. you are or what you're representing. If the content is good, then they're gonna rock with it regardless. Now, watch this. Now, if you represent the kingdom. And you seeking the Lord on what you're doing, Come on. then you're gonna have anointing that's gonna pierce hearts of the listeners. So uh. they're gonna rock with it regardless. Uh, right. They can't turn it down. Exactly. So how they can can't I take refuse. that name away from me? We're gonna talk about it. Hey, so, man, I, look, like so, going, <laughs> I like where you're going, bro. I like where you're going. What 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 about in the name of being relatable? What you mean relatable? You know, I mean that's some people's angle. It's like I'm trying to relate. With people and let them know that I can relate with where they are and relate with what I'm from they the, got going If I'm on. understanding, I'm from the streets, <laughs> yeah. so right. I can relate from the street standpoint. You too. see what I'm saying? Okay, I'm from the streets. Okay. Right? Right. And so it took me a while to get adjusted to Christian hip hop because I thought it was corny. Let's just be real. Mm-hmm. Me too. Me too. But when I heard somebody who really did it well, mm-hmm. I was like, wow, I can do that. Right. Because I was a successful secular artist Okay. before I got saved. I didn't know Christian hip-hop existed in 2009, period. Okay. I mm-hmm. never heard of Lecrae, Reach Records, nobody. T. Right. Hattie, right. shout out to T. Hattie, he got me in it because he came to my church and performed and came out to Lil Wayne of Millie but put his thing on it. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So I'm looking around, and they turned up in the church. I'm okay. like, okay, I can do that. Yeah, and so man. I started doing Christian hip-hop later on when I found out how big it was. So if I'm being relatable, then I need to stop saying I'm a Christian artist or, I, no, hold on, let me say, I need to stop saying that I represent the kingdom I'm here to share the gospel. Okay. Because when you share the gospel, we don't take sides, we take over. I don't be over here and then over here at the same time because the Bible tells us me not to do that. Man, y'all get that man a pulpit, man. Oh, 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 oh we're going to talk about it. See, the Bible tells me not to oh, do man. that. So I have to pick a side. Is you gonna be hot or you gonna be cold? So if I'm trying to be relatable, then I need to completely say I'm not trying to share the gospel. I'm just trying to relate and be positive. That's okay, the there you go. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just saying. Somebody might get mad at me today because you gonna share and you said we are gonna talk about it today. Okay. If you a positive rapper, that's cool. That's right. cool. Be that's you a positive rapper. Be All that. Right. But if you a Christian rapper, mm-hmm. that's a difference. That's a difference. Big difference. Mm-hmm. I'm you know just going to go ahead and say it. Let's say it. So if you a Christian rapper, you rapping about Christ, represent Jesus to the fullest. Mm-hmm. Ain't no, uh, we were talking about this earlier, Kai. Okay? Ain't no, it's black and white for me on that one. Ain't yeah. no gray areas. No. Right. Whatsoever. You holler cold. Whatsoever. It's no gray area. <laughs> yeah, I don't is. see how they, but, but here's the <laughs> thing though. Christian people are making the gray area. Okay. Right? Come on now. They making the gray area. Come on now. The world ain't telling them to make the gray area. Come on now. That's true. They created the gray area on their own. It was one minute. It was this way. Yeah. All about the kingdom. And then the next minute, it's a gray area here. That go that relatable. The world didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Christian folk did that. Okay. Right? So now it's time for us to have a self-checkup. Mm. It's time to look in the mirror and evaluate who we are and what mm-hmm. we stand for. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if Jesus snatched this away now, who are we? Mm. That right. If that platform disappears tomorrow, who are we? You gonna have something to say, or you gonna just stand now? Right. Mm. Mm? Or, or we gonna lose your identity? Come on. Right. Mm. Because if this goes away tomorrow, because God don't need us. 
You don't need Christian hip hop. This is a small piece of a huge puzzle. Yeah, right. You don't need Christian hip hop. Yeah, right. And it could be gone. Then what? Yeah. Are we Matthew 28, 19 through 20? Should be gone. Mm. Are are we there now when that happens? Or or we just don't know what we're doing? We're trying to find who we are now. That boy talking rapture end times. Hey, okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. (laughs) Say, we got to know. Yeah, you better know where you at now before you get on the stage and say, I'm a Christian rapper. Because if you don't know your purpose, then you are being a successful failure. Being successful is something God never called you to do. Let's mm-hmm. speak on it. Let's speak on I it. knew you not. Huh? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. But successful I led many in failure. Speaking I, in his name. I led many <laughs> in praise and worship at these concerts. Yeah. So, maybe what I called you to do, depart from me. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, boy, that's an ugly conversation right there. Sam. I know that right. Well, we talking I don't want about that it conversation. Today. The Lord turned you away. Yeah, I don't want mm. that conversation, bro. So, Lord, show me what I'm supposed to be doing. Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, as you can see, you are tuning into the Aspiring Artist Showcase. We're having a wonderful time today where the host is none other than, not the host, but the, <laughs> the guest that we have today is none other than Jow Dowdy. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I'm so happy you came to kick it with us. Yeah, yes, so. Man, I'm glad yes, for the so. invite, man. I got, I got excited when I saw the invite. I'm like, oh, they want me to come up now. I'm coming. <laughs> hey, hey, I've been following you. I've been, I told you, man, this is something that needed in the kingdom. Yeah. We don't have these outlets because... We're talking about it because so many people want. Let, hold on, let me say what, what camera I'm looking at. That one. Look, I don't mean no disrespect to any record label mm-hmm. out there, mm-hmm. but I heard uh, Thizzle touch on this too. Everybody wants to be on Reach Records. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to be Wado Radio or, 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 or Rapzilla. Mm-hmm. So we don't have the multiple platforms that makes this genre grow bigger Come to on. the size of a, a heavy metal genre or a uh, a gospel singing genre. Mm-hmm. Like Christian hip hop is still small and got a little small spot right. because so many people go into one location. But this right here helps it grow bigger and give us a different outlet to get here and talk to the people. Absolutely. So this is needed in the kingdom. We need more of these in the kingdom. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm just saying. So Amen. We, yeah, we're talking about it, baby. Hey, you're speaking on it today. Hey, I told you we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so are we chasing fame or are we doing what we're supposed to be doing and telling the world about Christ? Well, I'm not chasing anything. <laughs> I'm real with you. Like, look, that's what I told God. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, in 2012, 2013, I realized I had got off the path, and I was chasing fame. And I was chasing, uh, I was covering other artists. You know, okay. they doing this on Instagram, I got to be doing this. They, yeah. Oh, my God, they on Snapchat, I got to be on Snapchat. Yeah. They doing, and, and I was found myself back and forth yeah. looking for a record dealer, trying to get to the next level in this big platform and all this. Okay. And then God just, I'm talking about when I say he punched me so hard in the chin, I was on my living room couch, man, and I'm looking at all these record labels, I'm sending out these demos and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and I ran across Young Noah, and at that time he had just started Dirty Work with Plain James. That right. Yeah. They and I got on the Weddle Radio interview, mm-hmm. and he started breaking down covering this, and God whispered in my ear, that's you. Mm. And I sat back. I just sat there numb for about 30 minutes, just sitting there just staring. Yeah. And at that moment, I picked my phone up and I called everybody that was on my team. I said, if I got you doing anything for me, stop. Don't do another thing for me. Like, just stop. Don't make another phone call, send another email, book another show, just stop. And for 40 days and 40 nights, I fasted away from social media and away from music. I didn't do nothing. I just seek God and, and I just listened to my pastor CDs and I was just worshiping. I was just getting close to God. And I was like, look, if you don't want me to do this no more, I quit. Man. I don't got to touch this microphone, another stage. I would just plant in my church and serve. I will quit. But as I stayed in the fast, he started showing me, when you come out, do this. So when you come out, do that. So I knew I was supposed to keep doing music. And when I came out of my fast, I got a phone call the day I came out to go on a mission trip and do a tour through Philadelphia. And it changed my life, dude. Like, just changed my whole aspect of how I see myself doing this. So for me, it's about the souls. Mm-hmm. It's Amen. about not only that, it's once you get saved, the discipleship, the training, putting them up under right. the wings so they don't fall through the cracks. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And teaching them how to walk this out because at 4 o'clock in the morning when my brother or sister is struggling, they didn't even know what to do. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Watch this. 
Ain't a song or album I got going to teach them that. Speak on it, bro. Not a one going to teach my brother or sister how to live that thing out. Ain't a song or album I got can do Matthew 28. Mm-hmm. We call to go make disciples of all nations, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Baptize them, right? Mm-hmm. I don't got enough music that can teach you that. Like, I can never make enough music because Jesus Christ is endless. It's not an aisle. Oh, I'm there yet. Yeah. Because when I think that, he opened up a whole new avenue, and it's like, oh, my, wow. And now I'm going this way. So it's not enough music I can make to do that, mm-hmm. number one. Number two, I can't baptize you with this microphone. We're going to die. <laughs> right? I, I gotta get in this water, right? Yeah, right. You do. We gonna That's die. an obligation. We're gonna get electrocuted, right? Right. So that goes to show you that I'm not called to do music. Let's be real. Okay. Making disciples ain't got nothing to do with no rapping. Right? Get usher in the spirit, but then we gotta get to it. And that's the word of God. Mm. I got you, man. So, you introducing them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's yeah, what yeah. it's about for me. Now, music may kick open some doors, allow me to get in the building for me to bring forth the word God got for the people, mm-hmm. but it ain't the music. Like, mm-hmm. any time you tell me to stop, I'm done. So this last album y'all got, every single song, I, Lord, it's your song. What you want me to do? Who supposed to be on this song, Lord? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how I got Dre Murray in the album. Like, Dre Murray's on my album. And I can't believe it to this day because he's one of my favorite rappers. I was actually listening to his CD when I was writing the song. And I prayed and asked God, somebody's supposed to be on this song. I don't know who it is, but you sent him this your album. The next five minutes, I got a message with Dre Murray. It blew my mind. But that's what it is for me. It's about the people. I don't care about this music. And if I'm supposed to be the person of Northwest Georgia or from Rome, Georgia. That's yeah, my right. platform. Yeah, right. I'm cool yeah, right. with that. He ain't okay. got to send me to Atlanta, a bigger platform, 60,000 people, none of that. If I only got five, I got one, I'm cool. Like, I'm good. Hey, man, that passion. Yeah. Well, at least you know Yeah. <laughs> what you called here to do. Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. You know your purpose. Yes, sir. <laughs> Some folks are still, still searching for that. Yeah. Hey, get in your lane. That's it. Stop swerve. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of our listeners, they did ask a question, so I'm going to go ahead and ask. They say, other than rap, what other type of genres of gospel music or, you know, music do you enjoy? Or uh, you could probably say, what's some of your favorite artists? Praise and worship. Okay. Praise and worship, I would say, man. Um, I like R&B, too, though. Mm-hmm. But praise and worship is one of the best things because the enemy try to shut my mouth. That's one of his tactics on me, is to try to keep me from praising him. So I have to continue listening to praise and worship so that I can get into that place with God on a regular basis mm-hmm. because the enemy try to isolate me and shut my mouth. Amen. Yeah. That's what's up. So, so being that we're touching on these touchy subjects as it relates to gospel music, I guess we could say even just the state of the church mm-hmm. as it relates to the influence, mm-hmm. would you say, um, from your perspective, as we look at the things that are going on, would you say that we're having the influence that's purpose for us to have on the world, or is it more of that the world is probably having more of an influence on us? I would say that the ones who are truly about the kingdom is getting the influence. The ones that's one foot in, one foot out is giving the world the influence. That makes sense. The world is more influencing them right. than them influencing the world. And you really got to be careful with that because the devil work off your memory. So, for instance, if I used to hang in the trap and the whole time I was in trap, all I did was shoot dice. When I go back to the trap, if I'm not mature in Christ, the enemy is going to have me to the urge that I want to shoot dice. Absolutely. Yeah, right. So if I hung in the trap and I drunk <laughs> with my homies all day, mm-hmm. when I get back, he gonna want me to want to drink mm-hmm. and indulge. You see what I'm saying? I'm gonna justify that. Come on, though. I'm gonna pay a tenth of the tab on what I come up on from the crap game. Yeah, right? you, you might want to do that. <laughs> I'm just saying. I wouldn't advise it. I'm no. just saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, so we gotta be careful with that. And so it's easy for the world to influence the kingdom babes. Let me say it that way. Right. Right. Versus the kingdom babes influencing the world. So there, therefore, again, the discipleship come into play. Definitely has to be in the picture. It got to be in the right. play, and you right. got to have an accountability partner. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing that we 
uh, is, is big on in my church is an accountability part of somebody I can pick the phone up who's not a yes man who's going to tell me what it is straight up. True. Right. And then we're going to get in the word right then and there. And then we're going to pray right then and there right. because they're going to tell me, bro, you tripping. Mm -hmm. Come on now. You know what the word say, bro. You know good where that's You justifying, bro. No, no, no. You wrong. You wrong. Look, Matthew says, and blah, then blah, we're going to get into it. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. So, and you got to know your strengths as well as your weaknesses. Right? right? Absolutely. So if you put me around, if I'm a recovering addict that just got saved, I don't need to be in the crack house mission. Right? Right. Because I ain't there yet. If I'm a recovering addict, right? It's going to take some time. It's going to take some time right. for me to get mature in Christ that that no longer phases me. Then I may can join that ministry because I can relate to those that's in it. And we have a similar story in the Bible, Moses. Yeah. And he went. 40 days, mm -hmm. fasted, stayed away, came back. Mm -hmm. The Lord dealt with him. Mm -hmm. and he came back into an environment where he was raised and influenced and was about to be put in position mm -hmm. before the Lord called him from amongst them mm -hmm. and went back. Yeah. After the Lord dealt with him. And yeah. After he was waxed strong yeah. in the spirit. Now, let's go make some happen. Right. We got now let's lead the people. You see? Right. And so, and and I don't know why. Us, some Christian folk don't believe in that no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, we can just tell stories that relate to what I just said that's right in the Word. Right? And here it is. We don't even go to the Word for power no more. Like, mm. it's powerless. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, you know, let me let me just be real. This one thing God showed me. Okay. I made, this, this is why my album is called Bridging the Gap. All right, so I was raised up in Rome pretty much my whole life, and before I got saved, I lived in the middle of the hood, like in the middle of the track, mm -hmm. right? And so while I was in the middle of the hood or whatever, I moved away, got saved or whatever. And so now I came back. And one day I was riding through two, three years later, and I just had to look over there, and I seen the same people that was there when I was there, standing out there doing the same thing. Same mm -hmm. old thing. It convicted me. It, 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 it <clears throat> did something to the, my spirit. To It was greed. So I went to park my car and walk back over there, and I just sat in the midst of it. I was just a light in the midst of the darkness. I didn't say nothing. You could see the reverence of God. They respected it. They was high in the, the weed. They was trying to put it behind their back and not smoke it in me. And I was like, look, be you. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be you. I'm good. Right. You be good. Right. And then, um, and so when I left, I'm walking down the street, and God was like, you got several different people out here. Watch this. And I'm, and I'm one of them. <laughs> he said, you got some people out here who are a product of the children of my age bracket, the 80s babies, who was drugged to church. They were drug babies. Mom and them drug them to church. Mm -hmm. Monday they was at church for something. Mm -hmm. Tuesday it was Deacon Boy meeting. Wednesday it was prayer meeting. Thursday mm -hmm. it was this meeting. Friday, and then you had two or three services on Sunday, mm -hmm. right? Some days a week you went to church. Right. And we said, even me, when I get older, I'm not going. When I get my own, I'm not going to church. Mm -hmm. Well, we have had children, right? So the ones that did not go, thank God I had family that kept me in church. My mom and my dad has been preaching longer than I've been born. Uh, my mom is powerful woman of God. Mm -hmm. She's on the prayer, I mean the praise team, the whole nine. My grandmama, okay. everybody, right? So they kept me involved. Okay. But for the ones who said it and didn't go, they have had children who've never been. That right. So now you got that age group and that whole generation standing outside on the corner, and when a problem arises, he or she does not think the Bible not one time. Mm, exactly, because it wasn't never. It's never positive in them. Yeah, exactly. so they don't think they don't know power is there. The answer to what's going on is right there. They don't even know that. Right. Then you got some church hurt people. Mm -hmm. Grandmama passed and paid tithes a whole life, but the church wasn't able to help with the burial. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right? Amen. Then you got some that you know the pastor did something and showed he was flawed, mm -hmm. and they didn't like it. That yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Then you got the ones that out there that you know you wear that you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. You do that, you're going to hell. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want it then if that's what it's going to be. I don't right. want God then if that's what it is, right? Right. right? So you got all these people standing outside, and ain't nobody going to them. So he told me, change the name of your album to Bridging the Gap because you need to take them 
and oh yeah, you got another set of people because the Christian people is not going to minister to them. They telling their children, "I've been not catch you out here." Mm. Mm-hmm. Instead of going to ask why he out here, what you dealing with to get to the root problem, right? Mm-hmm. right. So you got all. He said, "So you take those and the Christian folk who are not doing something and bring them together to meet me in the middle, and that's bridging the gap." And that's why we made that project. Absolutely, deep concept. Yeah. Awesome, bro. Awesome. And, and I hear you talk about your mom, man. I, I read in the bio, man, of just how she spoke over your life. Ooh. And what was that, Boy. six months? Bro. Some things came to pass. Like, she, she had to put a halt on things that was going on in your life. Bro, <laughs> it blew my mind, dude. That's one of the, the, one of the real times that I saw the kingdom versus religion. Like. My mom spoke to me, and I ain't seen her talk to my mom in over two months. And she told me what I was dealing with, what I was feeling, mm-hmm. and what I was thinking. And I'm looking at her like, who told you that? And she was like, God told me. I'm like, oh. And I sat down, and I humbled myself. And she began to minister to me and tell me what God was going to do. And everything she said happened in six months or less. Everything. Just like she mm-hmm. said it. Man, that's why I say, look, for me, you can't tell me God ain't real. Like you can, I, you free to believe what you want to believe and live how you want to believe. Whatever, that's you. Right, right. But me, I have experienced Him. Right. I seen somebody speak a word and it happened the way they spoke it. Absolutely. And to go further than that, we get some two prophets come from Chicago, call me up and be like, hold on, I'm going to talk to you, but where your mama at? She the one I need to talk to. You the reason why he in here, in your house, and said the whole conversation. How you going to tell me God ain't real, man? How he know that? Right. Connecting the dots like that. How he know the whole conversation verbatim? <laughs> right. I'm looking like, okay, you know, like, oh, that's not made up. <laughs> right. So y'all had to have a conversation, know? like, what, what y'all not telling me right now? Really? Right? And then my mom looking at my mom, my mom said, I don't know him. Like, I ain't never met him there in my life. I'm looking at her like, for real? You didn't tell him that? She was like, no. So now I'm watch how God is. God want to go and further prove he's God. This man prayed for me. I'm crying because now I'm really believing in God at this moment. I'm like, Lord, you are absolutely real. So in the corner of the room, in my mind, I said, Lord, if I ever doubted you, I'm sorry. I'm yours. I surrender in my mind. He about to pray for somebody. He stopped. He said, hey, come back over here. God heard you surrender. Mm. Man, come on, man. How you explain that? I didn't speak that out loud. Hey, that's what I call being in tune with the frequency of the spirit, bro. For real. For so real. for me, at my house, we going to serve the Lord. Mm-hmm. I mean, you free to do whatever you want to do. Believe what you want to believe. Do your scientific whatever. Do you. But me, I've seen him. I've seen people be in the wheelchair 10 years, get prayed for, get up and leave the wheelchair there. Mm. I've seen people who wear glasses, couldn't see, get prayed for, put their glasses on the altar, leave them there. I've seen high blood pressure, hypertension medicine, get stayed on the altar to the point we had to throw it away, never took another pill. I've mm. seen it with my own two eyes. They can talk, mm. hey, I've seen them. When we, we, we ain't talking about the acts that they try and show us on no. television. Of no, no. People getting over on those, the weak and the, you know. Water. Yeah, all that we, we extra talking about stuff. some real. No, nah, I ain't talking about all that wave in my coat and you fall down stuff. No, nah, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the real true power guy. Somebody legs or limp in the wheelchair, get prayed for, they walk up, start running. We leave the wheelchair in the sanctuary. Mm. We put it in the shed. I seen it on my own two Done. Way. Yeah. So they, hey, you miss me with all that, bro. <laughs> 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 <Real boy. laughs> <laughs> Whew, Lord. Hey man, this the boy Jai Doughty, man. You know what I mean? Coming to kick it with them boys, man. Chop it up with them boys, man. It's a blessing, man, to just be in the midst of another believer. And I mean firm believer, man. We need brothers like this, man, come and, you know, gather with us, man, and just, you know, show you how strong we are out here, man. Cause a lot of times they look at uh black men as foolish and and 
and we ain't, yeah, we ain't gonna say that, but, but yeah, they, you know, they be some everything got them, man. You know what I mean? They mind just, you know, don't be focused on doing the right things, man. They don't want to work. They don't want to do do nothing that got anything to do with responsibility. But y'all looking at the evidence right now, man. You know, and the church did this, man. It's a product of the church, man. Yes, you know, a lot of people want to look down on the church. This is a product of the church right here, man. You want to hold my head up. want to look down at the church, man. But this is a product of the church, man. This man came out the church, man. You know what I'm saying? Somebody they loved on him and prayed for him and was there for him and then you know he came through. Yeah. Shout out to Apostle Good, man. Kingdom yeah. Church of the National. Hey, taught me everything. Transformed yeah, me from a boy to a man. Come on. Praise the Lord. Straight up. Hey man, that's how the word to do, man. But I like everything oh. you've been saying though, brother, man. We're gonna get into this music though, man. Speak on this uh what you got, good or great, man. Speak on this good or great. Man, good or great, man. You know, God asked me a question, man. Would you rather be good or great? And for a minute, I didn't know how to answer it because I thought I was already being great. So he started showing me more of my flaws, stuff, my skeletons in the closet. I was kind of hiding, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I was able to go to him and ask him to make me great, this song kind of came out of that. So it's kind of like a testimony song of how I went from a secular artist to a kingdom artist. And that's what I consider great, you know, being able to make that transition from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And I consider that greatness in that transition. So yeah. Oh. All right, man. So introduce your song to the to the crowd, man. You know yo, they can't yo, wait to yo, hear. Yo, yo, what up? It's your boy Jai Dowdy. And you're about to listen to Good or Great right here on 108 Praise Radio with them royal boys. Oh yeah. Posting up on the floor of my room Ears glued to the sounds coming out of my boom box And boy did that have me consumed Now I'm in the mirror trying to imitate every move Reading the album cover, visit my name in them credits One day, I'ma be just like them, bet it One day, I'm gonna fulfill my dreams And bet the world knows me when I grace the screen, yeah Fast forward like four or five years Now I'm the man on the mic in the midst of all of my peers Confidence turned to arrogance Cause it's so clear In a room full of artists I'm the dopest one there One of few battles experience some rap beat All from a worldly image that was never made for me In the kingdom, I had to come and find my place And God asked, would you rather be good or would great? Would you rather be good or 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 great? It was all a dream, sort of like notorious big setting beast. But now I really turn my dreams into reality. I stayed down, it was coming eventually. Money where my mouth is, my rhymes making a salary. But it's not really all it's cracked up to be A lot of shady business off in this industry I got in it for the love of the art Music flow through my veins, the drum beat of my heart Now, it's all about money, sex, and fashion Twitter and Instagram, how many people are passing Simple beats for whack, books and wordplay that is lacking From a real standpoint, I'm really asking what happened We used to be a culture filled with passion the money came in and we look past it. I walk away, God granted this grace. Again, like he asked, Would you rather be good or great? Would you rather Wait. be good or great? Would you rather be good or great? Good. Would, you great? Would you rather be good, be good or great? Or great? Part of us is thrown first, pass some checks Seen most of the world, but God's so unimpressed Cause he just wanna see his kingdom be a manifest So all these worldly possessions where he can care less And God can use anything, but yet he chose me For that I give him all the glory, cause it's not me And godly wisdom is greater than wealth And God's the only one I know that can outdo himself But 
10 years, I realized I got it wrong. Conforming to the world, I'm living it all through these songs. Instead of glorifying this money, that's all irrelevant. It should be a continuous fight to stay in this presence. Remove God and the world took precedence. And we became the subject and God became the predator. I walked away, God granted me grace, and I replied, Lord, please make me pray. Can you be good or great? Would you rather be good? A great Would you rather be good? Be good A great <laughs> Some deep stuff going on right there, man. Yes, sir. So, uh, first, before we get back into this interview, man, as always, 730 Mark, man, I want to thank all the listeners for listening, man. We love you. Couldn't do it without you. Keep listening. Tell your mama, daddy, sister, uncle, brother, aunties, whoever you can about the show, man. Your aspiring artist showcase right here on 108 Praise Radio. 108 Praise Radio. And uh, I'm going to give some shout-outs to you, man. Shout-out to Toby, always uh, representing Racine. Always. DJ Network. Angelia Networking Angela the Speaks Truth. TB2 done tuned in. Oh, uh, TB2. Oh, Christina. Shout-out to TB. Yeah. <laughs> highlight Real. John Winston. Oh, Highlight. Chosen. Matthew uh, Dimitrov. Uh, Talia Chambers. Poetic. Rafiki. Forgive me if I say the last name wrong. Olawani. Uh, the Mario DP, Thomas Phillips, man. Yeah, we super so appreciate y'all, man. Keep tuning in. Shout out to Chosen, man. Love, man. Looking out. Yes, yeah. Miss <laughs> Chamber, shout Fika out. Fika Woman. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, man. We got people checking in. Yeah, That's so. awesome. What's up? That was awesome, up, man. Poetic, that was TB2, yeah. boy. What's yeah. up, man? That's what else, man. He's something oh, else. Oh, Thurman. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. He's something else. Open your mouth. Oh, you something else. He's something else. That's my boy, that old man. He ain't finna let you just sit down and not get your praise on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were talking about being isolated earlier. Hey, he ain't having it, bro. No. <laughs> no, he ain't, boy. Hey, the first time I met him, we just went in in yeah. the green room before we had to go out. Yeah. Man, the Holy Spirit just fell on us. Me, and him, and Jeremy touched his back. They're just talking, chopping it oh, up. Jeremy Next Tutt, thing you yeah. know, the Holy Spirit, he just started prophesying. I started prophesying. Uh, 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 Jeremy started prophesying. We started praising, worshiping. We ain't even got outside yet. Like, we ain't even, <laughs> we in the green room, bro. Yeah, That's up? the first time I met Thurman, man. And wow. it's just been love ever since, man. Okay. Shout out wow. to Thurman, man. Yeah, That's man. It's a good dude. So, uh, uh, during the break, I heard you say it now. Uh -oh. You shot that last video. Mm -hmm. Three times. Yeah. Three times. Tell, uh, yeah. How did that work out now? All right, so the first time we shot... Um, it was more like just like riding around doing little steel shots or whatever, mm -hmm. and it was cool, but we just didn't like the footage. It was all right. So then we shot a second time, and I had like some nice cars out there. Dude had like a charger with the Lambo doors, the curtains, yeah. you know, 24s on it, matched the color of the car, right, all that right. good stuff, right? But most of the footage was kind of shaky. And we still didn't have a look, you know, you just not nah, feel you, you shoot videos, it yeah, just didn't yeah, feel right. Yeah. I was like, huh. So I was like, I was riding down the street and I looked up and seen the parking deck at Florida Medical. And I was like, hey man, let's go up there. So we went up there, we got a shot. And I was telling him, man, we was up there illegally. And <laughs> they said security kicked us out. <laughs> but we got the shot. Like, hey, right. we got the shot before he made it up there. So he okay. kicked us off and up there. And so uh, once we got that shot and we looked at it, we was like, aha, we got to get on high ground. And it's going to get that yeah, look that or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so some of the shots from inside the city or whatever was from that second shoot, we still kept some of the B-roll. But uh, the main parts of it was on that third shoot. That's what really brought it together. Okay. My, my brother, Jay Will Visuals, he just did his thing on that. And it's just been good ever since then. Okay. Well, that's what's up. You didn't give up. You didn't stop at good. Yeah, I had to be great. To be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to be great. <laughs> that song was calling for it. Yeah. <laughs> But at least you had someone, because Mark had to do that with me sometimes. I'd oh. be like, uh-uh, I'm done. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We got to keep going. Yeah. We got to get enough footage. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what's up. Um, also, I can't forget this. Make sure y'all call in if y'all want to chop it up with the homie, man. The number is 770-988-6461. Call in. We'd love to hear from you. And chop it up with uh, old Jai Dowdy. With the partner. <laughs> <laughs> 
So tell me this, what we got upcoming, man? Any new music, any upcoming shows? What, what, what we got upcoming, brother? Man, we got a couple shows coming up. Uh, the Takeover, shout out to Vince Carr, uh, Quentin Carter, uh, Brittany Carter. They put on this show. It's almost like City Takers, but it has a whole different flavor, a whole new feel to it. Right. You know what I mean? It's like its own thing. I don't want to kind of like, shout out to City Takers, who's Scott Free Double, Enlightenment, uh, mm-hmm. DJ Radical, you yes, know. Sir. Man, yep. they helped me a lot on my journey and becoming the artist that I am and learning about ministry versus doing music and performing. So shout out to them. But the takeover is something slightly different, but a little similar, but it's really different. It's its own thing, but it's like they bring a lot of artists together and uh, worship bands, and you just basically just go in there and you love on people, right? Okay. And while you loving on people, you get some good music, some good praise and worship, some good Christian hip-hop. You know, but it's more of a come here, let me love on you, let me like show you the love of yeah. Christ yeah. Yeah. while we yeah. in this building. And that's kicking off this Sunday in Rockmore at a church called North Church where Vince Carr is actually the pastor. Y'all probably met Vince. He go by the name of I Die. Shout out to I Die. But anyway, he's out of uh, Cartersville, but he he pastors a church called North Church, and we bring the take over there this Sunday, August the 5th. And um, other than that, I'm getting ready to start recording my next album. I got the name. I'm not going to let it go right now, but um, okay. it features some 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 good artists as well. Okay. Okay. And um, we're gonna get ready to start uh, recording and uh, releasing music. But I'm gonna put out like two to three more videos off this project first, and then okay. we're gonna jump into the next thing. So. Sounds wonderful. That's what's happening? Yeah. So the buzz still going with this one. You yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make yeah. Sure yeah you, you get all that you can get out of it and make sure. Artists. Let me talk to y'all. Artists. Listen. First of all. You got to know where your project is going before you record it. Let me say that. Let me give y'all a little inside scoop. Uh, Speak on, l- on l- bro. L- music business one on one. What happens if you don't have a destination from for your music? You end up with a box of CDs over there in the corner collecting dust, and you find yourself in the studio making a whole new project, and you still got two hundred fifty CDs, mm. and ain't nobody buying but your family because you didn't have a destination <laughs> for your music. I'm just being real. Can I be real? I I, I I can speak from experience because I did this. Hey, go to, bro. I had a whole I had about two or three mixtapes in the corner. Let's okay. just be real. Okay. Like didn't have no destination for them. I'm just putting out music and just making it, throwing it out there, and yeah. it ain't going nowhere because my marketing was nothing. It was trash. Right. And I didn't have a destination. Right. So what I'm doing with this project is I'm letting it breathe. I'm letting it do what it's doing because it has some great music on there. And new people are coming up saying, I like this song, I like that song. No, this song touched me. This song did this. And I got a song on there called Mask. Not the next video, but the following video. We're doing that one. And y'all got to check that out because it's a whole story. It's One is a 12-year-old uh, child being molested by her father. That's the first verse. Second verse is a, a school teacher that is married to a big public family figure in the community and he's all big and everything mm-hmm. and everybody fantasizes she got the big car I mean the big house the nice cars but he beats her every night and, mm-hmm. and don't nobody know it mm-hmm. so she got to put on this fake mask to make sure everything is okay in front of people yeah. and then the third verse is a guy who is battling with his sexuality and he's getting bullied at school Okay. and we're going to tell this story on screen so y'all get ready for that but this has been changing people's lives when they come up to me and they listen to this music. A lot of people can relate to one of those characters. So mm-hmm. we're going to make sure we bring that out, too. So, yeah, I got a couple things coming first before we actually move over to the next project. So that's smart. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah. man, how you just bring out different subject matters that, yeah. you know, people are dealing with. And yeah. You find sometimes that a lot of people are scared to talk about it. You know, mm-hmm. they may find themselves in it. Yes. Or maybe even have come out of it. Yes. But it's just still the courage to be able to speak about it. Yeah. You know, and, and to shed light, you know, because we talk about our testimonies and how we overcome mm-hmm. with our testimonies. Yes. And also, too, how others can overcome as well. Yes. But somebody has to talk about it. Man, believe it or not, there's a lot of people dealing with those topics. But there's also a lot of people who live a quote unquote secular life that walk up to me behind closed doors or in private and ask me to pray for them. They are afraid to show the world that they're vulnerable, that they're hurting, that they're dealing with something as if the world's going to turn their back on them. Mm -hmm. That's what the atmosphere or the culture we have created. And so they'll come up to me and slap me.
feel me? Oh, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, so a lot of times we just have to be sensitive to the spirit, right, and to be able to talk to our brother or sister and even take the extra step to reach out to him or her later on away from people so mm-hmm. you really can get with them and talk to them and love on them and, you know, get to a place where you can start discipling them because you can't always go in like that first, gun ho first. You got to get them more comfortable, more right, relaxed right, 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 right. in their comfort zone and share Jesus. That's why I'm so anti go to church, go to church, go to church, go to church because a lot of people who need God is not going to church. They're afraid to tell. You know, so many times I sat in, in church as a young person, I would hear the Holy Spirit say, you need to go to the altar and because I knew somebody in this building, I'm not moving. Right? I can't be the only one that feel like that. Oh, a lot of folks feel like that. You feel me? So, but watch this. But if I was in your yard chilling, you're more prone to open up and talk about what you're dealing with here at your house or on your block. Right? So we got to get out of the church walls because we are the church us people, we are the church, not right. the building. Right. We got to go out and love on them where they are in their comfort zones. And then we can start seeing some lives being saved and changed and then discipleship takes place. And once you be consistent, because that's the key, consistency of being out there with the people, then they're more prone to say, I'm going to go to church with you next Sunday. Right. Because in the consistency, I can see how that shows to them how real it is. Because mm-hmm. if it's not a follow-up or a follow-through, I would like to say. Yeah. Then, you know, you, you, how, how, how are you persuading them and convincing them that I need to follow this or take this up as well? Yeah. Think about it. Y'all y'all see the back-to-school. Y'all been booked to go perform at back-to-school, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then you don't hear nothing about that church no more until next year. So back nine times out of ten, you don't see that part, does not see any gospel being shown. That's right. true. That's true. So that's inconsistent right there. We need follow up after the back to school program. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, and as you know, you you talk about you know the transparency and you know just this covering. It, it, I go back to a time where you know I found myself dealing with some things you know health wise and mm-hmm. you know the pride of men. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, women. I'm pretty sure they have theirs as well. But you know how we don't want to, you know show ourselves as being humble or mm-hmm. being brought down from a position, you know, whether it was popularity or, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it was, big name, whatever the case may be. And you're not top dog now yeah. in that side. And the yeah. Lord is bringing. So it's like now that we have to put on this, this, this coat of humility mm-hmm. and for people to see that, it, no, it's not that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, like for me, I found myself dealing with two things, and it was more so of, okay, being sick, it was pride because mm-hmm. I was an athlete. Mm-hmm. And then the other part was, okay, I don't want to wear sickness either. Mm-hmm. So I had to find the balance mm-hmm. of being able to talk about, you know, the things that I was dealing with yeah. and put it out, you know. And yeah. God had to deal with me on that, you know yeah. what I mean? And I had to be honest with myself of when it was pride and when it was, okay, I'm just exemplifying the strength of God because I'm not going to wear Sickness, mm-hmm. but we're so more so his healing. Mm-hmm. But there again, I had to talk about it. Yeah, because people didn't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you was dealing with all that. Yeah, for real. Yeah. And when I start talking, it now starts to open up. This like now they want to listen. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's God though, man. Yeah, it's God. It's God. So we can go back down memory lane with you, man. Um, you know, just what was the point where you found God tapping you? To say, hey, it's time to let that go. I need to holler at you. Wow. So when I told you the story about my mom, that's my turning point, my my tipping point, my conversions. Um, so at that time, I was dealing with, like, man, I was smoking weed from sun up to sun down. Like, boy, if I got up to go to the bathroom at 2 o'clock in the morning, I fired it back up. That's how bad it was. Okay. Like, like terrible. And I was drinking like that on top of that, too. And uh, it was all stemming from depression, because my children's mom took them away from me when we broke up. And that was her payback. Like, oh, you ain't going to be with me? All right, cool. You ain't going to see your kids no more. And so that told me, 
up. I was straight to depression. And at this time, I don't know God either. Like, I don't have a relationship with God at all at this point. I know of him, but I don't know him. Mm-hmm. And in doing that, that's when he led me to my mom's house that day. And she gave me that word, and I walked in, and then, boom, I gave my life to Christ. That was a Wednesday that she gave me that word. And so, like, I gave up everything right then and there because I was on my way to a barbecue. My friends hit me up. It was like, look, we having this barbecue over here in East Rome at the projects. Uh, go get this bill, this liquor, you know, and bring it over here. We'll pay you back when you get here. I'm like, all right, cool. So as I'm going, I got everything, and I'm on my way back, and that's when God spoke an audible voice. This wasn't no impression or anything. He spoke an audible voice, go see your mom. The first thought came to my mind was, you tripping. You smoking too much. Yeah. <laughs> God of the truth. I'm like, boy, you is tripping. Smoke that. Whew, and I wiped my face, and I rolled another red light. I heard it again. Like I said, I ain't seen my mom in two months. I ain't talked to her. I'm really ashamed because I'm in depression, and no one in my family has ever seen me like this. So I don't want to go around. That's why she didn't see me, because I don't want to show my face because I felt like I wore it on my face. You know what I mean? I, mm-hmm. I felt like they would see it in me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I did a U-turn, went to her house, and then she prophesied to me and told me, like, you know, all the power that your baby mama thinks she got over you. God said he going to break it. Uh, I'm supposed to leave you this house we're standing in right now, son, but if I give it to you, you're going to squander it away. Um, your, your, your job, your living, everything going to change if you just give your life to Christ. You know, he said he's ready to pour out an Ephesians 3, 20 blessing on your life. And I'm looking like, huh? He said that. But what I caught was my kids. And all she said, I called, oh, I get my kids back. Okay, cool. So as I'm riding to East Rome, I said, what you fin-? Well, I said, what you finna do? She said, uh, I'm fencing to go to Bible study later on. I said, don't leave me. I'll be back. I jumped in the car. And as I'm riding, I told the Lord, I was like, look, I hear you talking to me. And I'm going to try you. But watch this. I'm not going to play with you. I'm not going to be one foot in, one foot out. I'm not going to be still clubbing and hustling and drinking and smoking and chasing women and all that. I'm not going to do all that. Okay. I'm going to give you everything I got. But if you don't work, I'm going to go back to doing what I know how to do. And so I, I remember getting over there, and I remember bringing in everything, and they opened up a Budweiser and threw it to me. I caught it. I threw it back. I was like, hey, man, I quit. I was like, what you mean you quit? Man, here, get this bill. They threw it. I caught it. I threw it back. I was like, for real, man, I'm going to go to church. Every one of my homeboys started laughing. I'm talking about like I told the best joke in the world. I'm talking about holding a gut laughing. Ka, yeah. Ka, ka. yeah. You, oh, man, that church stuff don't work. You'll be back. That's what they told me. Mm-hmm. I didn't understand it then, right, because I was 38 hot. Like, I'm like, y'all, I'm trying to better myself. Y'all laughing at me? Like, I'm 38 hot. Yeah. But I understand it now. What they were saying is we know religion. That don't work. Religion don't work. Sure don't. But the kingdom do. So they were saying, we see religion and we know that don't work, so you'll be back. Mm -hmm. That's what Mm -hmm. they were saying. I didn't Mm -hmm. understand it then. I understand it now. Okay. And so I was like, whatever. So I went to the car and I had about $200, $300 worth of weed, like ready to sell. I was selling weed. So I came in through the weed. I was like, hey, man, y'all take this. Y'all can have this too. And so I jumped in the car, went to my mom's house. We went to Bible study, and I went to the altar. Like, when I walked in, I walked in expecting God. Like, I walked in knowing, like, Mm -hmm. I came to get him today. Way yet. That's how I came in. Like, I'm way yet. Point him out. That's how I came in. Mm -hmm. And he showed up. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit hit me. I felt the burning on the inside. I felt, like, the chains falling off, the breakthrough. I felt everything of him. At that altar that's that Wednesday, and that was February 2009, and I've never looked back. Now, I've not been perfect. Let me say that, people. Not perfection. Had many slip-ups, failures, everything. Mm-hmm. But I've always gotten back on that path to seek after him, repented, dusted myself off, got back at it, and kept going since then. And I can tell you there's not a dollar amount you can pay me to go back to that life. Mm. I don't care what it is. Yeah, so awesome. that was my turning point right there, and that's, like, the biggest testimony I have. Well, later on, you know, of course, six months or less, you know, my mom my mom got married June the 5th, and her husband bought her a brand-new house. She gave me that house. My ass, my little brother has to shoot my videos. He got that house right now. Okay. Still in the family. My mom still own that house. Okay. Um, I went to court, won joint custody of my children. I just had my children this weekend still to this day. Amen. Um, Amen. And then I got another job. 
I got a new car. Like, mm. everything just changed within six months or less. Like I say, everything she told me happened. Now, to go on further, um, I won Father of the Year for the whole United States in t- like a, two years later. So after I got okay. my so after I got my uh joint custody, you yeah. know, I got in this fatherhood program with uh Charles Smith. Shout out to Coach Charles Smith. Mm-hmm. That's my like my second daddy, like for real. Okay. And um yeah, I ended up winning Father of the Year for the whole United States. They the whole flew, United the States. The whole U.S., bro. Like, mm. okay. the whole U.S. This is somebody who didn't have their children, man. Like, for real. Okay. Complete I, turnaround. Complete turnaround. I won that. They flew me to D.C. I went inside the Pentagon. Like, like for real, for real. Like, I went to the White House, didn't go in, but I was there. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was leaving the Pentagon, Obama was flying into the Pentagon. That's why they made everybody leave out. He was coming in. Like, I seen what a plane hit and all this. Yeah. Like, I got a private screen of the movie Courageous because wow. that movie was getting ready to wow. come out. They showed it to okay. me. Okay. You know what I mean? So It's fatherhood now. Yeah, this fatherhood now. <laughs> this for fatherhood. Oh, oh, oh yeah, this, this daddy stuff right here. Okay. Bro. I'm big on fatherhood. Like, okay. I've been all to right. a lot of seminars, teach on it, the whole nine. Yeah. And, um, and so that happened. And then... I'm trying to think of something else happened that was significant. Oh, yeah, that's when I got saved, too, because, like, I didn't, I mean, I mean, I got into Christian hip-hop because, like I said, I didn't know it existed. So immediately after that, it was, like, March or April because I didn't think I could rap no more. That's why I created my clothing line and did movies and videos because I thought rapping was over. Okay. So then, so that was February I got saved. So then it was, like, March or April, T. Hattie came, and then, boom, I started doing Christian hip-hop again. Okay. So, okay. so all that stuff kind of happened all within itself, you know what I mean? Yeah, so... Well, we know time winding up, man, and I just can't get it in, man. I want to say so much more to my brother, man. You know this right show, man. He got a lot to pull out on him. I need to do like a two-day show. like You see what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 but you know, man, I'm going to turn it over to my homie Stony Hill, man, so he can get us, you know, ready to get on up out this thing, man. Man, there's some points today where I just... I almost caught the Holy Ghost up in there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Two or three music can't, hey, that music can't do it. Hey. <laughs> two or three are gathered. Hey, that's proof right there. Hey. I had to shake it off a little bit. I didn't want to see it. One moment I wanted to jump up, but I'm going to let that go. Hey, we got man. the sheet to put over you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I super appreciate you coming to kick it with us, Ja Dowdy. Real quick before we go, though, social media, man. Uh, I am Ja Dowdy everywhere. Just follow me on Instagram. That's I M regular J A I D O W D Y. Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm on. I'm on Instagram more than I'm on anything. So follow me on Instagram for real, for real. (laughs) That's what's up, man. Tune in every Monday, 7 p.m. The Aspiring Artist Showcase with them royalty boys, and uh, we love you. God loves you too. We gonna leave on this. Praise him. By John Dowdy, man. Hey, hey, <laughs> by the homie, man. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey, hey. John Dowdy on fire. See, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to wave my hands high in the sky when I shout, jump around, even cry when I lift the almighty yo high when I Yeah. Praise See, when it's good, I will praise him. When it's bad, I will praise him. Learn to count it all in joy. So when I'm mad, I will praise him.
I felt the flames, so I feel your pain. But no longer do I wallow in my misery. I lift my hands up and give praises to who strengthens me. And I can care less on who's around me, cause I don't talk the talk.